Hi all, I have a very entertaining and exciting game to show you today from the TCEC Season 14, Division 3. So this is against Hannibal playing with the white pieces, the opening book given, so Leela with black. Uh, the opening first four ply or half moves is this, this passive looking D6 here. Uh, so this is like Vienna game territory. Hannibal plays Bishop C4, now Bishop E7. Quite often knight f6 is played here. For example, this position, white has a small edge. You can see that the little pawn center here, white has a good grip over d5. It's not the greatest of openings for black at the moment. So bishop e7, d4, e takes. And now, instead of playing queen takes d4 to get that position we've just seen, kind of position we've just seen. There is the lunging move Queen H5, very direct from Hannibal, targeting the soft spot. Okay, so can this knight be taken? Well, Leela did take it, and actually white can force a perpetual check. Before we look at that, on G6, maybe Leela rejected this because of Queen D5. And if bishop e6, queen takes d4, white stands a little bit better here in this line. Uh, you can see the nice control of the d5 square. Maybe just Lila doesn't like this. So she actually just took this pawn. But really, there's a perpetual check. Queen takes f7, king here. If white wants, there's a perpetual check with queen e6 check. So for example here, we just carry on checking like that. And if the king ventures out, uh, well, say to avoid the checks by not going back to d7, then it's checkmate there. So, yeah, it's actually interesting that Hannibal played now bishop e6. It thought it could do better than that. King c6, we have knight f3. Bishop takes e6, queen takes. And now Leela plays bishop f6. Uh, that parries the knight d4 threat, which is a big one, just, just as a token move to show you. Uh, say h5, just to give white the move. Check, check, and then mate. So there's dangers in the position. So bishop f6, there's nothing really black can do at the moment. Uh, not too much. Uh, we have the move rook b1. Now perhaps b4 might be a good try here. It looks dangerous for the king on c6. And it seems as though a5 is the key move to play. For example, this position uh, where black has to sort of counter sack a piece, believe it or not. But this should be even apparently. Uh, on a6 instead, then this gets nasty with the e5 move, with that horrible pin on the d6 pawn. Uh, it gets pretty nasty. White should be technically uh, better. But it's not an immediate mate or anything. White's just got a big advantage. So rook b1 is played, and we have queen e7. And all of a sudden, black has some interesting ideas here. The first one, of the check is to offer the rook on a8. So is white just going to gobble Leela up? Is this going to be a classic uh, munch from an alpha beta style engine after queen takes b7? What can stop white here? After knight c6 offering the rook, what's the big deal about this position for black? Uh, now it should be noted if if casting rights are forfeited, queen takes c2 is actually nice. For example, taking that rook there, it's nasty for white. So, some caution there. You know, there's taking on a on h1 potentially, and then queening again, for example. So, bishop e3 is played. Now, a key move here, which may be was not calculated by Hannibal. It seems to be a very, very key move, uh, very important here for black to be able to get out of the box, uh, to be able to develop pieces. At the moment, this knight's pinned uh, because 
of that pin there. So black to play, what would you play in this position to kind of use the unpinning in a way tactic? You want to invoke an unpinning tactic. So how how would you do that? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, black to play. Okay. Dual purpose. G five it protects actually the rook. And also, of course, this pawn's very aggressive in its own right. Dual purpose. White castles. Uh, on h3 here, then knight g e7 hits the queen. And for example, here, queen takes c2, rook b8. And now this pawn is actually quite dangerous. And black's doing very well. So uh, on queen b7, g4, for example, knight h4. Uh, well, this is a bit of a silly continuation because that that knight can just be taken anyway soon. But let's let's say uh, instead of knight h4, well, there's not too much actually because because of because of g2. So that that's why yeah. So this is not this is not desirable. So h3 would be perhaps more sensible. So anyway, uh, white castled, which is at least giving the knight now e1. If, if g4 so we have knight g e7 being played if g4 immediately then the knight can use that e1 square then we can hit the queen with this and now hit the queen again and now take on b2 this should be okay this type of position uh it's it there's dangers in the position here you know if the knight moves there's things like knight c5 uh, check with the rook staring at the king here. So it's dangerous, uh, but apparently black has a small edge here. Black can claim a small edge. But anyway, Leela played this, didn't commit to g4, knight g e7, and again, not committing to g4, just plays rook b8. And in fact, the focus of attention is this passed pawn, it seems. Leela's really interested in this passed pawn and offers g5, offers the, the g pawn. That's taken. Uh, so that's an interesting decision, a bit materialistic perhaps. On c4, as another example, then g4 is handy. For example, here, it's uh, not so bad for the king in the center. And in fact, white, this is just an illustrative variation, could end up being tied in knots, it seems. For example, like this. Uh, yeah, it, it can be leading to a position where black is is really in charge of the whole position and the king isn't such an issue and even if the queen gets lost two connected pass pawns in this scenario is, is crushing so there's very interesting scenarios that could emerge here on a move like c4 uh, but we have bishop takes g5 the greedy <laughs> the greedy uh, way bishop takes knight takes but queen takes c2 Queen a3, and now we have knight d4, king h1, now knight d5. So impressive centralization of the knights here. This h7 pawn is offered. Now Leela doesn't take this knight. Um, she would lose that nice pass pawn if she did. If queen takes, then white takes that pass pawn. And black has got an advantage technically, but... Without the pass pawn, it doesn't seem as much fun. Uh, so Leela keeps the fun, really, with that pawn, knight c3. And it looks very winning, actually, as well. <laughs> so, yeah, this would be an irrelevance, really. Uh, so it looks very winning to do this, in theory. But is there going to be perpetual checks? Queen takes, knight takes. Yeah, offering the b8 rook. So both rooks have been offered by Leela in this game. Quite entertaining. Uh, so now queen c1 but this pawn now really is super dangerous rook g1 knight c3 france link to queen again but now the evaluation of hannibal uh was actually at zero and I'm, I'm not i was wondering uh if this was real but apparently you know it had been checked by other engines and it's not so hannibal maybe at some depth is missing something here it actually seemed to believe there was a perpetual check in this position. Knight f8 check was played. King c6. 
queen a8 check king b5 queen b7 check king a4 queen a7 king b5 check now king c4 now here if white tries queen a6 check then one of the knights the c knight can retreat and this position is winning for black uh, black has a big advantage here the pawns are really not very helpful with these knights on the board this is uh, very bad for white's king safety etc so we have actually queen takes c7 and the king walks down the board check now knight e4 now that knight's pinned but it would be threatening knight takes f2 checkmate if it's not pinned and it's not pinned here after check king c2 so the threat is knight takes f2 checkmate now as well as this pawn being dangerous check knight c5 okay g3 and the pawn queens yeah leela's getting back some material now getting back a whole rook so a knight up albeit for free pawns here but look at white's king safety queen g5 there are big threats in this position emerging queen a8 queen f5 so looking at light squares looking at the knight f3 and now d5 so looking now so interrupting the diagonal so that f3 is a big target f4 and the king comes in for the attack now king d1 it's leader's pieces are really going for white's king here sniping at white's king queen a3 a big centralization octopus knight knight d3 it controls a lot of squares now these knights are helping the king avoid any perpetual checks mightily centralized queen a4 check and now knight c2 h4 and now it's black's turn and instead of taking the knight here Lena is going for the king with queen g4 we have the knight going to g6 off being offered again it's ignored again check and king h3 queen f3 and the game actually ended here by adjudication uh, so it looks as though white's king is in big trouble the game could have continued for example queen a7 as an example there's d4 cutting off that diagonal so here for example that just is desperate if that's the best move that's pretty desperate we can <laughs> just take the queen off after throwing in a check but uh, say king h2 what's the big deal here it's knight f2 threatens queen h1 checkmate if king g1 queen takes g3 knight h3 threatening queen f2 checkmate and this knight's really stopping any key check against the king uh, but in this position it's so desperate this is the top move it seems according to uh, stockfish uh, so that would be checkmate so this is a how it could have ended so yep queen f3 it ended here so a very interesting game it would have been a bit sad if the perpetual check early on was taken up but Hannibal believed it had more and perhaps speculation it might have overlooked uh, the rucksack in conjunction with the later g5 move that sort of thing does seem a bit difficult intuitively to calculate maybe it, it slipped up there uh, so very very interesting so that rucksack and then kind of the, another rucksack this pawn was triumphant after gaining some material and then leader went for white's king after so i thought that's pretty entertaining i hope you enjoyed it too if you enjoyed this game video please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbowl.net you can play against other youtubers you can also check the youtube analysis of this and other games from the improved menu learn from the masters youtube order button comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe hit that notification bell and also the new teespring store they're all in the description description all that support is really appreciated okay thanks very much